Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be going over my latest project here, which is my Arsenal SAM 7K-55. Um, I know I teased this video a couple months ago in a YouTube short, uh, when it's sitting in its stock form, and I'll drop a little picture in here of that again. Um, and my full intentions was to get this video out sooner, uh, but I ran into some issues, mainly being uh, some work that needed to be on, uh, done to it in order to make it run suppressed. And I will get into that in more detail a little bit further in the video. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into the SAM 7K because it's not a new gun. Um, as far as a new model that's out there, it's been out there for quite a few years. Uh, lots of information about there already. This video is just going to go over my build and some of the components I chose, why I chose them, and some of the pros and cons and a little bit of the shooting features of it. Um, in case you have a SAM 7K or you're thinking about getting one and you're wondering about any of these accessories or also any the, the, the shooting experience. So going ahead and getting into the issues that I had with running my can on it. Um, first off, let me go ahead and show the uh, YouTube community that it is a clear gun. No round in the chamber. Um, uh, anybody who's seen my videos, uh, previous videos knows that I picked up this Huxworks Flow 762 Ti. Uh, at the beginning of the year, got a little bit of melted 100 concept light cap on there. I'll clean off later. Um, you know that I got this uh, early in the year. I knew that I wanted to get one when they first came out, but um, you know they were a little bit more expensive. And, and then going through the weight again of a can when I already have the HX uh, QD 556. But anyway, wanted to run this can. Uh, and what my intentions were, since the factory threads on the SAM 7K are 24 by one and a half millimeter right hand, um, Huxworks does make a mount for that. Uh, it's threaded to those same dimensions, uh, would slip on here. If you could see the factory threads there, looked very, very good with it on there. Again, I'll drop a picture on there. This is what they classify as a flash hider. So um, with AK-47s, the uh, the mounts that you typically have to get they are called face mount so once you torque and tighten these things down um they they butt up against the end of the barrel since that should be a little bit more true and square uh versus you know a lot of ak's the threaded section is part of this front sight base and you can't shoulder index them because you're going to run into the front sight base itself now you can see the pin was uh the detent pin for the muzzle device was removed uh, but even when this thing was tightened down it, I can't remember exactly. I don't think it made contact with the detents, and if it did, it was very, very minor, not enough to cause deflection. Uh, but I will say that, you know, with AKs, you know, reading about them, that they are notoriously non-concentric. Uh, I did go ahead and buy a Huxworks alignment rod for this. Um, and unfortunately, you know, once I got the gun, once I got the mount, tightened it down, put on my can, ran the alignment rod through it, and there was uh, some some very light contact right down here at the end of the tip. Um, I'll drop a picture in there. In the picture, it doesn't look so bad, but it was definitely making contact. Uh, when I held the gun straight up and down and kind of like freely dropped the alignment rod through there, it would hang up. So it was so minor. Uh, I went on, on social media and asked some questions, and uh, everybody said, you know, yeah, that's going to make contact. So ended up sending uh, the gun out to Taylor Pickerel at GNI. Uh, if anybody hasn't heard of him, he's one of them. I think he's more of one of the more renowned um, AK Smiths out there, known to pull some some miracles. Not only does he work on these, but scars, barrel chops. I mean, just Google the name. There's tons of information out there. So, contacted him via Facebook, sent him the pictures. He told me that you know he might be able to save this. It didn't look that bad. Maybe stretch the threads a little bit, reface the uh, barrel, and um, he had the gun about five weeks. Uh, it didn't really get a chance to work on it until about week three and a half in, maybe week four. And come to find out that he did get it uh, squared up. He hand tightened this down. He checked the alignment, sent me a picture of it. It wasn't absolutely perfect, but it was pretty dang close. I know he strives for perfection. So problem that he ran into was once he went ahead and torqued this down, what he found, and this is what he told me, is that these mounts aren't truly face mounts. Uh, the way he explained it to me and sent me a picture is that there should be a boss inside of here because the front sight base in the threaded portion is like a sleeve that slides over the actual barrel itself and then is cross drilled and pinned. Um, 
that it, it, it face mounts to both the front sight post and the barrel. And he said due to that, once he torqued it down, he pulled it out of alignment. He said he couldn't even get the alignment rod to go through the can. It definitely would have destroyed the can. So the only option I had at that point was to go ahead and get a different mount um, and have it re-threaded. So I had this cut to one half by 28. Uh, ended up having to pick up uh, a different mount for it. In this case, this is one of their brakes, 30 cal half by 28 threaded. Um, what you see here is the remainder of what where the threads used to be. So it doesn't look as good as it would if I had the actual AK mount on here, um, but it worked. Uh, at least I was able to run it suppressed. So that was really the big hurdle uh, and the big thing because I did buy this gun simply to run it suppressed. Always wanted a crank style AK, um, at least crank length, uh, and to run a cane on it. Um, that was really the sole reason. It ended up costing me quite a bit of money because Taylor had to do this job twice. So I paid him twice. Uh, he, he said I didn't have to, but you know, he, he spent his time and money and that was the right thing to do. So um, finally got this back a little bit and was able to take it to the range. Ran great. I'm gonna drop some video in here. Uh, 762 by 39, this is my first experience suppressing it. Definitely not as quiet as um, 556s, uh, but I did notice and what's even, it is still fun is, you know, this Huxworks Blasphemy, which is one of my very first videos that I did a review on, said it wasn't very uh, effective. Uh, you know, somebody pointed out because the guns that I tested on the time were uh, flash hiders. Um, they were not the brakes. And somebody had mentioned in the comments that, you know, it would probably be a lot more effective if you use it um, with a brake. And after shooting this, I 100% agree with that. Now, I do have a brake on my 18-inch 5.56 FPR gun, and I tried the hooks, uh, the blast me on it. Didn't really notice a whole lot, but you're talking about an 18-inch barrel shooting 5.56. Definitely more blasts using a 7.62 by 3.9 through the break. And, and what I'm also going to include is some video of me shooting my Boreal. Um, because I shot that without the blasphemy on there. And you can really see the energy dissipating around it. And you can hear a difference. I know that a, a cell phone is not great at picking up audio. But you can definitely tell uh, an audio difference when you are running the blasphemy on there and compared to just open, open break. So I am going to revisit this a little bit once I can get some help, uh, a partner with me out there on the range that can kind of sit really adjacent to me and tell me if they feel the difference in concussion um, coming next to them uh, without the blasphemy and then without it on. So there was some video of me running and shooting it, and uh, I do really like, you know, I, I, I sat back and I played the video of me shooting um, this gun here with the blast me on it, and it sound, has a very distinct sound to it, and I'm like, man, where did I hear that from? And then after a couple of days, it finally dawned on me. If anybody saw the original Die Hard, or the first Die Hard with Bruce Willis in it, uh, as he shoots his, his M92, um, you know, they made it sound like just like an absolute beast. So I think that the uh, Sam 7K with the blasphemy sounds just like how the sound engineers made Bruce Willis's uh, Beretta M9 sound in Die Hard. Uh, go check it out. Maybe if I can find a video clip of it, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it in there. But um, ran very well. Didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. Um, suppressed or unsuppressed, that should be expected as, you know, flow through can. So um, moving back. I'm gonna go with the handguard. And now the, the Dash 55 model that I have here, one of the big differences in it is that it has US made furniture between the grip and the handguard versus Bulgarian. And they're styled a little bit differently. So the USA version, you get the saw tight grip on here. Um, you know, has the cutout for the ambidextrous safety on the other side, or well, thumb safety on this side. Uh, I had this on my SLR 106. Really like that style more, but I also really like this ribbed uh, handguard and the the one that came with it looked just like this really dug that style and my intent from the beginning was to uh, not put anything on it now I wasn't even gonna run an optic I wasn't gonna run a flashlight on it 
but me, I, I have to put optics and weapon lights on everything. So once I got the gun, I already started looking around. You know, my thing was, is like, how am I going to add a flashlight on here? A um, couple of different options. Um, I could have gone with the Ultimac, Ultimac rail, um, but I wanted to keep that style on that, uh, on the, um, the rib top cover. Uh, also toyed with going with the Ultimac rail in order to add an, an optic to it. But at the end of the day, I'm not really the biggest fan of how the four mounted optics look on AKs. Uh, I think they look even worse on the smaller guns. Just doesn't fan. So I ended up picking up the RS Regulate. I believe it's the like it's like the GKM dash five R or something like that. They make this in two versions. And they make a rib just like this in order to match up a little bit better with the rib top cover, or they make them smooth. So if you had the Bulgarian furniture, it has a smooth top cover. That'd probably be a better choice that you would uh, you would go with. Um, as you see, it's got M lock slots. Uh, it's got them at three, six, nine, and then also, um, I guess five and seven here. And when I'm going for the weapon light, uh, I knew I was definitely going to run it thumb activated, you know, very similar to like what I have on my AKV. Um, also my 11 and a half inch LMT slash Colt build. So when I grip them, I can thumb activate it. You don't have to dick around with uh, pressure switches or anything like that. And I went with the Surefire M340 Turbo because I definitely wanted some horsepower on it. Um, and I hadn't messed with the 340 yet. Plus, didn't really want to get a full-size body light. You know, some of my other videos I mentioned, I do not like 18350s, and I still don't, but I do have their place. So my AKVs, I'm running 18350, and here I'm running 18350. This light is absolutely sick. Uh, some of the problem, though, with the very short little handguard is that there's not a lot of real estate to put your hands. I mean, that's caused two problems for me. So if I mounted the light, you can see the, 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 the mount swivels right here with the OEM mount it would have pushed the flashlight back this much further so not really a lot to grab onto so i went with the arasaka inline scout pro mount super super solid mount this is the third one of these i've gotten um well, second one of these but i also have the picatinny version um gets it pushed out enough to buy you some real estate and that you can reach around and again activate this with your thumb not the most natural feeling position but not, definitely not bad uh and then due to that since this is a legal SBR, uh, I did go ahead and add the vertical foregrip on there, which I feel gives me a little bit better control and gives me uh, the light manipulation. So um, that goes for the handguard. So for the sling here, uh, as you mentioned, there is, or as you can see, there is an RS Regulate QD slot here. Uh, but every sling swivel I have does not seem deep enough to be able to pick that up. Um, so I didn't use one, but additionally, I think really what's the bigger problem is that you can see by my grip here, my, the, my, the palm of my hand, the butt of my hand would be right over the sling swivel. And I really don't like the way that feels. So simply running some paracord along with a good old, uh, blue force gear HK style hook, um, going ahead and running the feral concepts, uh, sleeve on here. So just so it's not knocking up against the handguard and making noise and whatnot. Uh, as far as the sling goes. This is the Edgar Sherman's design. Now, I've had this sling for a while, and I am typically a Blue Force Gear Vickers tactical sling uh, all, guy all the way around. Uh, I've never really been a big fan of this because of the one-inch webbing and because it's so loose, but I gotta tell you, in this application here, uh, I, I really like the way that it works. Um, uh, I, I may have to try more of these in the future. Uh, as far as the rear attachment, um, and I'll get into the stock in a minute, there is a QD attachment on my um, buttstock back here. So I have also toyed with just running some paracord back here and then running an HK, HK style hook. Um, but it kind of, if I put it back here, it can it slide all over the place. I really wasn't super fond of that. Um, so I'm just going to do QD school for now. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how I like it. I know when I went to the range this past weekend and ran it, it did get a little bit in the way. So we'll, we'll, we'll see where that ends up going. Um, as far as an optic mount. So with the optic mount, um, has the side rail and the Arsenal Sam K, as I mentioned, I did not want to go the Ultimac route. So really the RS Regulate was really the way to go. This is, if anybody's not familiar, when you buy RS Regulate mounts, there you buy the lower part and then you buy the upper part. So with the lower, this is the AK-312M, which is rearward biased. Um, and, and you have to play, I know it looks a little weird with the optic this far back, but because of the way that an AK mount works, a uh, side rail mount is that it slides on and then it locks closed. So if you were to buy the forward mount, which would put the MRO somewhere further up here in a more natural feeling, natural looking position, um, 
you would not be you would have to break down the top mount and remove that before you could slide off the aft mount or the bottom mount so i really thought about going with that for a while because you know in ak it's like how often do you really need to clean them you know so i thought about it and toyed around with it but ultimately i said i did not want to go do that because <clears throat> in a hurry uh if i needed to if the optic went down and i needed to use my iron sights um i wouldn't be able to do that very quickly unless i ran a qd mount on the mro itself so, you know, some people may be saying, well, why are you even running the Picatinny mount when they make specific mounts for the MRO? That's true. One of the things I don't like about that, though, is that the RS Regulate mounts, when you get the optic specific ones, they give you absolute co-witness. I am not a fan of absolute co-witness. I feel like the irons take up way too much of the sight picture. Um, plus, I wanted to get it up a little bit higher. So I ended up choosing the Picatinny top mount, which then I could use a standard low mount with the MRO. Um, I did also buy a QD mount for this one, but at the end of the day, uh, I decided it was a lot going on. I mean, you had a QD lever, you had all this kind of stuff. So I just went with the standard non QD mount. And again, if I need to get this off in a hurry, all I got to do is loosen this latch, pop it off, slide the optic off, and then I can go uh, use the optics. Uh, for the optic itself, uh, I went with the Trichicon MRO green dot. Uh, no, it's not definitely not the best red dot or dot out there, period. You know, there's long rumored with the parallax issues. Uh, this is actually my third MRO. I think, you know, first and, and firstly, um, I, I really love the way that MROs look in AKs. I think they look really, really natural. Um, and, you know, I've, I've never, I think with the intensive purposes for this gun of the short barrel and the ranges, um, I did, never ran into the parallax issues using my previous MROs. I mean, you know, you have the larger sight picture and it's definitely more pronounced. I think the parallax issue is more pronounced because you have opportunity to move that dot further to the left further to the right all the way around because the objective lens is much bigger than what you would typically see on like something like a t2 comp m5 something like that um but i gotta tell you to get in that position it makes it for a really really awkward shooting position so um i don't know i, I that's what i'm running with i'm happy with the choice that i made i like it i'm going to talk about the trigger real quick uh so the trigger that comes in this one it is really not bad you know for an ak trigger uh, it's, it's three and a half pounds consistently. Some people may not like how light that is, but I am used to Geisley, uh, AR trigger. So it feels really good to me. Short of the fact that what you get is more like a rolling break and then versus the defined break. Um, I did put a Feynman Hans to my Burial and I shot those two guns back and, you know, back and forth this weekend. Couldn't really tell a huge difference in between them with the exception, exception of the shape of the trigger shoe. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not super fond of that, but it's really just so much as looks i don't feel it gets in the way of my shooting or anything like that um moving on to the stock so this is the cnc warrior it's really um it's really the only option that i was looking at you know when i was first toying with getting this gun i was thinking about just getting the brace i will say the cnc warrior uh the metal tubing here um it is metal so whether you get the pistol or whether you get the stock the thing that's different on the brace is that you have an open end down here uh in order to slide your wrist through um so but other than that it looks basically exactly the same the hinge mechanism is the same um it really looks very stock like and it doesn't flex like the sb tactical ones do so ultimately i knew i wanted to do an sbr and a buddy of mine said you're never gonna be happy with it being uh, a pistol just go ahead and sbr it so i did approval was really quick it came back in like four business days like four calendar days it was really really quick um this they make these in two different versions uh, i believe it's an eight and a half and a nine and a half though i may be wrong it may be seven and a half and an eight and a half but the difference basically is in the length that one is like the shorter warsaw pack length uh you know typical shorty ak stock and the other one is more like the length of the nato nato pack so uh i got the longer one because i knew for me i've never been a fan of the warsaw pack and then i also opted to get this um a half inch or three quarter inch rubber butt pad on there to give you a little bit more length of pull i like the way it look um that it feels it's great for me uh and then i also got this cheek riser here because i knew for one with this optic sitting a little bit higher uh and then along with my chin corner of my chin being on a uh, corner of my jaw being on this middle tubing uh, cnc warrior they do make these cheek risers um it it works i'm not 
I don't really like the attachment of it. It seems a little bit wonky to me, um, but it does work. As you can see, I mean, you can adjust the slide more forward or more aft, uh, and then you have different adjustments to raise the height on there. So I believe this cost like 80 bucks. It was an introductory price. Uh, the other thing about the CNC Warrior, um, uh, whether it be you get a stock or a brace is you have a couple different options on these you can choose whether they're going to fold left or right for me i chose it to fold to the right you simply just much like the galil ace you just push down let's see if i can do this on camera without looking ridiculous sorry i'm bumping the camera over there we go that it's really not that hard. It's it's me trying to navigate it around the camera, but much like a Galil, it's spring loaded. You push it down, which it allows it to open up. And as you see, once you get it past a certain point, it 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 you know closes with authority. It's not loose. Doesn't want to open up on you easily. You know there is it's there's some resistance there to keep it from just dropping open. Um, you would be able to still fire this folded if I did not have this uh, uh, cheek riser on here. So uh, I've had many different folding socks in over my, uh, my life um, on different platforms. I've shot them folded a couple times just for shits and giggles. Um, but in comparison to how often I plan on shooting with the sock clothes versus having the comfort of my cheek, uh, I go with the cheek riser. But you can choose it if you, especially if you don't, uh, or if you're not gonna utilize the side rail. Um, or if you don't care, you can choose the option for it to fold to the left instead. Um, one of the things, and again, very similar to the design of the Galil Ace, is the way... Let me take this off here real quick. The way that this designs and it locks into place here is that it's, it's a very solid and positive lockup. And as you see here, as it closes, as the two kind of dovetail into each other and then drops in place, um, you know, this, this is can't remember if this is hardcore aluminum or if this part is steel itself but it as it wears in it's just going to get snugger and snugger so you don't have to worry about that getting loose on you um you know the the cnc warrior brace is or stock or brace the same price they aren't cheap but it's a super solid setup uh they also offer different attachments so the sam 7k from the factory came with a small section of picatinny rail in the back so they do make an option that will attach to that rail i'm not a fan of all the how it looks it just looks like you're haphazardly kind of putting it on there so the option i chose with was going to be a direct mount to the receiver so all you simply do is you go you know pop the top cover pull your carrier out you go in here you loosen the nut that's holding on the picatinny section <clears throat> you pull that off and once you pull that off you can hold the base here in place and as you can see here these notches here along with these ones on the bottom keep it square on the receiver keep it from twisting and rotating uh there is a bolt that is located up in this channel here it slides up in you put it through the hole and then you just screw on a nut along with the block the oem block that's typically back there and you tighten it down use the 7 16 wrench just do it little by little uh, get it nice and snug and then once you have it in i mean this thing is rock solid there's you know there's a little teeny bit of give there in the hinge area here you can probably hear it, but you can't even really see it too much. So definitely, definitely highly, highly recommend uh, the CNC Warrior Stalker Brace if you're going to go that route on your SAM 7K. So lastly, the shooting experience. Uh, this thing was a ton of fun. Uh, I really, really liked it. Um, I will say that I am debating getting a KNS piston for it, but again, I'll drop in some video here again, and it's really not bad. In fact, uh, if, if you look at the video of me shooting my barrel, which is a 16 inch barrel, so a full size AKM, um, that my barrel pushes me around more so than the SAM 7K does. Uh, I know that AKs can be, are known to be notoriously over gas, at least more of them, most of them. And based on what I've read on the forums, uh, these things are known to be over gas. But I mean, I gotta tell you, as far as you can see me doing my drum dumping there, 
it's 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 pretty dang smooth but you do see the, the casings being ejected uh, a pretty decent bit i never measured them i know kns says like 15 feet or more you could probably benefit from a kns my only hesitation on getting one of those is that i bought one from my galil ace in 556 um because that thing launches uh, empty casings in the stratosphere and that thing will not run on anything but fully wide open so even one click in and it will not reliably lock back on an empty magazine. And you know, these KS pistons, they are not cheap. So don't 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 know if I'm gonna go ahead and get one for the Sam 7K yet. Uh, I, I am just very tempted because I've seen videos from Rob Ski, from from Clayco, you know, guys different KS piston videos out there, and you see them where they get to the point where the empties eject, similar to like an AR, just in a nice little pile, six to ten feet uh, to your right. Um, and they all mentioned about how much softer the recoil is and, uh, you know, everybody, everybody enjoys a softer shooting gun. So I, I, I may go ahead and do one. I think I'm definitely going to do one on the real, um, though, when I look at the videos, it's hard to tell if they're, if they're throwing them the same distance or one's throwing them further than the others. Uh, again, if you go back and look at the video, you'll see like, as I shoot, some of them shoot low or eject a little bit lower, but the majority of them shoot mile high, you know, diagonally up at two o'clock and then further away off camera but um i don't know we'll see but um that's about it so i got for this video again that was to be my overview of my sam 7k and then along with the upgrades you know, that i put on it the reasons why and some of my experiences with it um so anyway if you guys out there are thinking of buying one maybe already own one i think about doing some of these upgrades i hope that could uh that could help you out uh, but that's about that's about it for this one. So if you like the content, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video as much as you'd like. Uh, definitely appreciate all the new viewers that I've been getting and all the feedback that I've been getting as well. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.